We're in the June 2010 exam, and this looks like page 5. Question 17. The diagram below represents a 155 Newton box. So that's the weight going straight down. Applied force F causes the box to slide from point A to point B. Distance of 5.6 meters and a height of 1.8 meters. What's the total amount of gravitational energy gained by the box? I'll find a formula. And potential energy as a result of gravity is mgh. So it's the mass times the pull of gravity times the height. Now here's the trick to this question. They've given you mg. This is the weight of the object, 155 newtons. And so uh, the potential energy will be 155 times 1.8. And so uh, it's got to be more than 155, um, and it's going to be less than 2,000 because two would be, you know, uh, what, uh, 310. So it can't be that. So even without a calculator, I can get the right answer. Question 18: An electric heater operating at 120 volts draws 8 amps through a 15 ohm resistance. The total amount of heat energy in 60 seconds. And uh, in the electricity equation we have work is equal to electric energy. So work is equal to power times time. I don't have power. A voltage times current times time. I think I've got voltage. I've got current. And I've got time. So um, I'm going to just go ahead and get the calculator out for this. And there we are at uh, 576 with some zeros behind it. Magnetic fields are produced by particles that are charged particles moving produces a magnetic field around it. So moving and charged. That's it. Neutral wouldn't do it. Stationary and stationary wouldn't do it. You get electricity around a wire when you got a current flowing through it. Question 20. A charge of 30 coulombs passed through a 24 ohm resistor in 6 seconds. What's the current through the resistance? Hope you remember current is I. And current is uh, change in charge over time. So I need the resistance. So it's 30 divided by 6. Looks like 5 amps. Question 21. Uh, this, is a, this is a hard one. What's the magnitude of the electrostatic force between two electrons? So you're looking force between two electrons are separated by a distance of uh, 1 times 10 to the negative 8 meters. And it's this equation here. F equals kqq over r squared. So you need to know the charge of an electron. And uh, that's on the front of your reference table. Uh, that's one elementary charge. It's also the charge of a proton, and it's 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. If it was a proton, we'd call it positive charge. In this case, it's an electron. We call it negative charge. If there's two of them, it would mean there's a repulsive force, and that repulsive force uh, would push them away. But they're not asking about direction. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. Now we said what F equals KQQ over R squared. So we're going to find K. I bet you that's on here too. Yep, that's the electrostatic constant, whatever that means. And uh, 8.99 times 10 to the, to the ninth Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. K is 8.99 times 10 to the ninth. Newton meter squared per coulomb squared. And uh, now it's you multiply them and divide by r squared. Don't forget to square it. A lot of people make that mistake. Let's go see what the answer is. Oh, yeah, I need a calculator for this. And I'm getting uh, 2.3 times 10 to the negative 12 Newtons. I had to do some work for that one. Okay, let's go to 22. It works better if I just go ahead and position it.
The diagram below represents an electric field surrounding two charged spheres. Now, I'm going to... Electric spheres are drawn based on the path of a positive charge. What direction would a positive charge? So the arrows are going in that direction. So even before I read the question, uh, they're going away from this, so this must be positive. They're going towards this, so that must be negative. So let's see what the question is. What's the sign of charge on each sphere? There it is. Uh, sphere A is positive. No, it's not. Sphere A is negative. And Sphere B is positive. That's the right answer. Both spheres are... Spheres. No. Spheres are positive. Pfft. Negative. They wouldn't do that. All right. Which circuit has the smallest equivalent resistance? I like this formula right here. Resistance is the material times the length divided by the cross-sectional area. Resistance, material, length divided by area. So uh, everything in all these pictures are twos. Well, if you put them in series, it just makes it longer. So the more you put in series, the more it is. And so this would be uh, two and two. This would be four. This would be two, 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 and two. So that looks like about eight ohms. Okay, let's look at this. A pair of these in uh, parallel would actually um, double the thickness of the wire. So it would be two times the cross-sectional area. This is quadrupling it. It would be four times. And so this would be the smallest resistance right here. Now there's a formula for resistors in parallel. Resistance is equal to one over R, one over R total is equal to one over R1 plus one over R2. And you could do the, the math and say, you know, one half, one over two plus one over two is uh, um, two over two, and which is equal to one. One over one would be the equivalent resistance would be one ohms. And over here, it's uh, one half, two halves, three halves, four halves, or two fourths, or one half, or uh, that would be the equivalent resistance, would be one half. But you really don't need to work the math if you remember this formula. That's why I like it so much.